Kuzongpo, this week in the business file, we are here in the Woodcraft Center with the Chief Executive Officer of the Woodcraft Center, Mr. Pima R. Rinchin. Uh, Kuzongpo, sir, welcome to this program called yes. Business File. Thank you and for having me here. And let's start talking about what has happened in the last 22 years since you're celebrating two years, uh, two decades of existence of Woodcraft Center. Well, uh, to begin with, I'm the fourth CEO of this company. Uh, it's a government enterprise which has the uh, social mandate to train the Bhutanese youth in the art of furniture making, uh, cabinets, uh, and the second uh, societal obligation we have is uh, to provide the necessary expertise, the advisory role to the other wood-based units. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, uh, as the government mandates, uh, as the company gets to do better, uh, it has to commercially sustain, which we are doing. Mm. But when you have to train, uh, function as a training institute at one hand, and at the same time when you are asked to make money, yeah. and then when you are talking about uh, trainees, there definitely there are a lot of uh, what you call wasties. How do you <coughs> balance that? If you look at it from one perspective, uh, yes, it's, uh, it can be an obligation. Uh, it can weigh down on us because uh, then the training involves a lot of factors. You mentioned about wastage, you mentioned about uh, then getting new machines, uh, which adds, again, financial cost to the center. But if you look at it from the positive aspect, uh, we can look at it uh, after they get trained from the center, they can also be an asset, a human resource asset for this company, and they can continue along the way. So we meet, yes, the uh, objective of having trained the youths, uh, and then also having them to work uh, in the company and giving them the necessary employment. So when you are talking about em employment, how much of people, how many trainees are uh, absorbed by the industries outside and <coughs> how many of them are recruited inside the Woodcraft Center? Well, uh, I can say that over the past two decades, uh, there has been over 200 numbers of them in the job market now. Uh, the, the training course is quite vigorous. There is a three-year uh, course, uh, which is divided into nine semesters. And it includes right from the occupational safety to the hand tool machines to the final machine operation uh, aspects of it. Uh, it began in the year 1990 with about three trainees. Mm -hmm. And we have today, uh, like I mentioned, about 200, uh, 200 uh, skilled personals. Uh, most of them, uh, I would say about 50% uh, of them uh, are still being retained with the center. Mm -hmm. uh, about 20% have started their own units. Mm -hmm. uh, we have examples uh, plentiful. We have the wood tech uh, uh, in Paro. We have uh, some Tashi Namgyal uh, industries over here in Timpu. And it goes on. But the, but the, but the gratification of all this training is uh, these in turn provide the necessary employment mm -hmm. to our youths. Uh, they, in turn, provide the gen revenue. They provide the necessary revenue to the government. And so it becomes an ongoing process where this social obligation is also taken on board. So when we are talking about uh, employment, another <coughs> thing is how far are they trained if they want to self-employ themselves, if they want to uh, establish their own unit? Yeah, uh, like I mentioned again, there are about 20% uh, uh, of them who are out in the open. I've had the opportunity of visiting them, uh, especially the one in Paro. He seems to be doing very well. He's got, uh, he's, he's employed around 10 to 15 people. Uh, uh, they, they help in the manufacture of furniture. And they basically take, they do our component, our manufacturing component in Paro. And uh, they, like I said again, it takes three years, uh, then, they become a machine op assistant machine operator, then they move up the ladder. And uh, I would say that uh, it would take around five to six years before they become really skilled mm -hmm. in, the, uh, in the given work. Again, having said that, that is only one component. We have the upholstery unit, we have the carving unit, we have the painting unit, uh, and each of these sections requires a certain uh, number of years of expertise. But it is a very integrated. Okay. Uh, it is a very integrated uh, project work over here. Uh, everything is uh, uh, imbibed in it. You can see the crafts 
like you can see the tree over there, it's, it involves first the manufacturing, the cuttings, the exact designs. Then you get the carvings out of it. And then finally the painting, the final finished outlook. So you can see three components in it. And that's what it takes to become a skilled person. Skilled. And then what I feel is what is missing is the entrepreneurship quality. Are you going to in include that? In oh, yes. Uh, the Ministry of Labor, they have this program called the ATP. Yes. And uh, we join forces with them and also include in our curriculum the entrepreneurship uh, elements of it. Uh, I have been the first entrepreneurial development facilitator in the Ministry of Economic Affairs. We are the ones who started the how to write a business plan, how to start a business. So I've, had a, I've got a little bit of expertise in it. And uh, as much as possible during the training session, I also give, uh, I, I, I conduct some courses on entrepreneurship, which is very important. Yes. But uh, having said all this, uh, the reason why there's a very low turnout of, the of our own workforce going out and starting their business is because of the risk factor. Mm -hmm. The capital requirements, uh, these are one thing. Uh, but it does take a lot of, uh, it takes a lot of guts to start. Start a business on Start your... a business of this, so, because it's not uh, easy. So, uh, four years ago, when you joined this office, right. uh, I've been told that there, there was only three million worth of revenues yes. that this food craft center earned. Now you're <coughs> targeting 60 million. Yes. It's, don't you think it's ambitious? And how are you planning to achieve that target? Well, uh, one of the things I forgot to mention earlier was that uh, there is a huge potential, huge, huge potential in this, in this market. Uh, uh, you can make any type of products related to wood. Um, if you look, uh, the 3 million, 3.5, 3.1 million was the earlier uh, revenue sales, uh, I think about five years ago. And uh, now today we are targeting to 60 million. That just shows that there is tremendous market. Uh, I think we are trying to bridge in the gap between the imports that are coming in. And when people get to see our product ranges, uh, invariably they, uh, they tend to choose ours. And that's where we are able to we are able to pr uh, provide the, yes. and I think quality aspect is also very important. Quality in terms of durability, in terms of uh, the aesthetic wise, uh, these things we always take on board. Listen, now when you're talking about uh, uh, the product sale, your major uh, uh, market is government offices, institutions. <coughs> what happens once that demand is fulfilled? We have, uh, 97% of our market uh, within the, not only the government, but the corporate and uh, the public bodies. And uh, uh, there is this uh, element of, uh, uh, not exactly fear, but uh, uh, in case it rises up. Uh, but we are working towards that. That is also the reason why we switched on to the joinery component. Uh, that is where uh, the market also lies. Mm -hmm. uh, the, we are talking about the windows, doors, we are talking about not mm -hmm. windows exactly, we are talking about insulated mm -hmm. windows, insulated uh, the, do the, 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 the doors that come with proper fittings. Mm -hmm. so. And we intend to give all this. So mm -hmm. if you look at it, uh, we are trying to move on to, not exactly, uh, we are trying to move on to other product lines. And there, are, there is huge, huge potential mm -hmm. in the wood-based units. So, uh, when you're talking about new products, la, this is one of the new products, double glazed windows. Yes, uh, the reason why it is called double glazed is because if you see, there are two components of the glass uh, fitted with the aluminum strip over there. Uh, in between, the air is trapped, and that's how you get the insulation. Uh, this is uh, not exactly a new phenomenon in the uh, in the in especially the in of cold, the cold places, especially in, yeah. in cold places where you can have total insulation, and uh, there's no heat loss. Yes, the windows are a very large, uh, big component of our insulation because if you see, most of the houses have a lot of windows, and this is where the air seeps in, and it's primarily the glass, the windows where the air goes in, and if you have these double glazed, the toughened glasses put into place, which we have are working towards the expertise of this, then we can have a perfect insulated window. Likewise, on the doors, we can have the various insulation done. How affordable yeah. it is. Now, if you look at it, the major component, uh, the cost is on the glass. This is a toughened glass. 
and uh, we intend to get it from the manufacturers in Calcutta, uh, hoping to bring down the price. Uh, but uh, the rest of the components will be all wood. Uh, blue pine, um, uh, wood which we can get available in Bhutan. Mm -hmm. Because if you see again, this itself is a very, very heavy window. Mm -hmm. You can see the, mo the major uh, component of the weight comes over here. And if you even have the, the hard wood over here, then it becomes even more mm -hmm. heavier. So uh, we will be having the blue pines and then the mixed conifers to do on this. Now on the cost, uh, we have yet to work on it, mm -hmm. but uh, we will try Roughly. to make it. We will try to make it as affordable as possible because, again, this is not going to be hardwood. It's going to be the blue pine and the mixed okay, software. So, roughly, how how much would it come to? A window of this uh, of uh, of of three uh, three eyes would come to. I would say it would be on the lower side, eighteen to twenty, and on the higher side, around thirty thirty thousand. So, when you're talking about joineries, this is something new for Woodcraft Center. And when you are <coughs> introducing product like this, what are the advantages or disadvantages? In the last uh, couple of years, uh, I d did get a lot of inquiries on the uh, manufacture of the uh, joinery products, uh, asking if we can do it. It's not only the corporate bodies, but also the private individuals who come and tell us to do the entire package for them. And uh, I think over the period of years, uh, mm -hmm. one gets to understand uh, just to get a uh, feeling of uh, what the market could be like out. Uh, I, I personally feel that this has tremendous, tremendous growth potential. Uh, today, if you look at any builder, uh, they are handicapped because they don't get the good artisans, they don't get the good people to work on it. If you can provide the value, if you can provide the total package to them, people are willing to pay for it. And yeah. I'm not just necessarily saying the government, but even the private individuals. Mm -hmm. the, this is the joinery that we talked about. Yes, yes. Uh, the joinery mm. meaning the doors and mm. then the mm. pelmet uh, mm. of it. Uh, as you can see, uh, this is a very common type of uh, door and mm. the, the, the supporting that you have yes. over here. These are all made of blue pine, mm. which are readily available mm. in the country. And uh, the aesthetic is very beautiful to look in. It's unlike the hardwood that we have, and uh, uh, the 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 one the paneling which you see over here is also mixed conifer, mm -hmm. which can be readily readily available if if if, if given. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, but how different is it going to be from the other manufacturers or other wood-based industries in the country? The other wood-based units uh, do also similar uh, designs, mm -hmm. uh, similar sizes of this kind. Uh, we intend to follow the government standard designs. They have a certain requirements mm -hmm. because, like I said, the entire uh, our, our entire target is towards the government. Uh, how different it will be? We have we have a big competitive uh, comparative advantage in terms of the finishing. Mm -hmm. If you see the joinery machines that we have down, the brush sanding machines that we have, it gives you a very fine fine, fine outlook. Uh, fine and smooth. Now, now, now you don't get this normally mm -hmm. <coughs> in other wood-based unit. Mm -hmm. Neither do you get the final finish, the mm -hmm. melamine finish, which we do it till the mm -hmm. full. Mm -hmm. What you can get is from the, from the other units. You may get uh, certain design, limited design, uh, then they just give you in piecemeals. You are required to put it up. We are going to give you a total complete package solution. If anything goes wrong in the future? Yes, we give a one-year warranty. Mm -hmm. So can you be competitive in the market with the kind of products that you have here today? Well, if, uh, if, if I throw the question back to you, uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's not a question of uh, being competitive. It's a question of fit, filling in that gap uh, mm -hmm. where people cannot find the appropriate suppliers for it. Uh, a lot of people want to pay. But you cannot, you, people cannot deliver. People just cannot, the, the suppliers or the manufacturers, they just can't meet the demand. And in this case, over here in Woodcraft, I think we have established a brand in terms of quality where people tend to think that uh, we provide the warranties, we provide the backup services, the quality finishes are the best. And uh, if you can do that, I'm sure people are more than willing to. But it's also it. expensive. 
Yes, uh, if you see where Woodcraft is uh, comparatively positioned, mm. you'll see that we are in the highly differentiated, uh, the low margin, the, the low market uh, volume mm. product. And if we tend to just focus on that, uh, I think there is, uh, th there, is, there is a market for it. Uh, we are not uh, broadly differentiated. We are highly focused, we are highly differentiated mm -hmm. in terms of quality, and I think there is a niche in that. When we are talking about journey products, once, once you have introduced, are you also looking at uh, giving a new kind of skills to your trainees here? Oh yes, uh, that, is, uh, that is a very, very, very important element of mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. center. See, what happened in the past was the trainees would just be working on the furniture component. Mm -hmm. And when they, go out to the when they go out to the job market, mm -hmm. what happens? The manufacturing unit, uh, say, uh, Wanchuk Tech, uh, they, re uh, they, 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 they remain disappointed because then the trainees who pass up from here simply know how to make only tables or chairs. Mm -hmm. But what we need to do, if we are really talking about wholesome training, mm -hmm. we need to also get them trained on the joinery component. So while we talk about the commercial aspect of the joinery units, we should also take on board that the trainees need to get a more wholesome training. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure more than, uh, uh, more than, uh, more than any other units, uh, we ourselves would be uh, looking forward to this, uh, to, to, to this training component. So uh, when we are talking about, well, while we are talking about the subjects and products of Woodcraft Center, sir, you have this, uh, you use usually the rubber hoods. Yes. So are you also trying to work on the local hoods yes. so that the people can, people who want a product from WCC yes. can still get? This has been my first priority when I came here to Woodcraft Center. I want to give an affordable mm -hmm. range of not only joinery, but even the furniture component mm -hmm. to the middle income class. If we can get our own wood, Mm -hmm. the blue pines and the mixed conifers, we can deliver. We can do it at one-fourth the price what we're doing as of now. Uh, it's just that we don't get. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you notice, the, there may be, uh, there, there are certain norms of the government which uh, just entitles uh, certain formulas mm -hmm. uh, to get their quota. But here, what we have to do is, we have always been trying to pursue the government to give us certain quota mm -hmm. uh, for the hood. And if, uh, if we can get that, I am very positive that we will be able to bring down the price, not only in terms of the price, but also be able to bring about the real import mm -hmm. substitution. Because mm -hmm. just now we are importing a certain segment. Now, we should not get confused also. Mm -hmm. Not everything is rubber. Mm -hmm. uh, not everything is going to be from Malaysia. The, mm. the, the, the woods that we are going to import. Mm. Uh, we also use 30 to 40 percent of the wood, our blue pine, mm. whatever we can get mm. to make the sofas, mm. to make uh, the other components uh, so that uh, it is you know, aesthetic mm. and it's strong. So, uh, <coughs> apart from this brand new showroom and the joinery, what has changed in the last four years? Well, I have uh, come here and uh, I have tried to change uh, the motivation of the employees, which is very important. Uh, uh, they need to be constantly reminded that uh, not only is uh, your pay at the end of the month important, but also, you know, their society, their their obligation to the society. I mean, let's give an example. Uh, we are being criticized a number of times that uh, the government just simply gives us the order. How difficult is it to deliver? Give you an example of the minister's enclave, the centenary, the coronation celebration. If you are asked to deliver, we do it. We work, we toil through the Sundays, we work overtime, but we make sure that our woodcraft does deliver it. We will not shy away from such things, and we have been doing it till now. And I think that is uh, one of the things that I've been able to build up among the employees, the motivation, the working culture, the, the societal obligations we, uh, we owe to the society at large. Yes. Uh, apart from that, uh, I think uh, in terms of uh, human resource capacity building, earlier 
Uh, there were very few who used to even step out uh, of this factory. Now we have trainees who have gone, done interior designs in Korea for a year. People have gone, they have gone to some other woodworking institute. They have got a different perspective. Uh, we get to understand the management, at least we get to understand the, the entire dynamics of this woodworking uh, business. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, uh, th things, things are looking so bright. When, when you're talking about trainings and traveling abor abroad, are, are you going to have our own designer here in Woodcraft Center? Yes, uh, like I said, uh, we have sent two oh. people out. Uh, hopefully, another two should be going to Korea very soon. They are going there in the, uh, for the R&D purpose, uh, the, in, basically the interior design. Uh, the, the institute in Korea they have is uh, supposed to be uh, a, a very well-known, renowned institute yes. where they try to mix the modern and the traditional. Mm -hmm. And these people are able to bring in the practices over here and then be able to implement it. We use AutoCAD designs. We try to uh, outsource, but most of the time we try. We have to get the Bhutanese, the Bhutanese aspects into the fusion between yes, the, the modern and, and the, the modern. yes. So, yes, we are. We are that is one of our objectives. We intend to have an R and D center so that mm. uh, we can be asked any time to come up with our own design, mm. and which is not necessarily the same old. So, what else can we expect in the future? <coughs> I see a very positive. Uh, uh, outlook for this uh, center. Uh, I see that this center has a capacity of training over 500 employees uh, with this expansion. I know that there are potentials to come up with many other product ranges uh, and I know that the wood-based unit is a continual, continual business that uh, will never ever dry up. It's, it's ever there. It's, it's an evergreen project. Thank you for being with us. Uh, with that note, I'd also like to thank our viewers for joining us in this Business File. Do join us every Tuesday for the Business File program. I'm your host, Ashok Tirwa. This is goodbye.